Hello, my name is Dave. And if you're new here, I produce landscape and photography related videos every single Sunday at six o'clock. If that's the sort of thing you like, watch the video to the end. And if you enjoy it, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can find your way back. This week's video, you find me in the Scottish Highlands beside the wonderful Loch Lochie on a beautiful still winter's day. We're gonna take some nice landscapes, some pictures of some mountains. You're gonna see some Highland cattle. And at the end, we're gonna say goodbye to a very good friend of the channel. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy the video. Watching away from the life that I knew Leaving behind all the things that we grew Good morning, welcome to day two of our Scottish road trip with Gary Sugden. He's just on the shoreline again. Um, and we've been to Spain Bridge to shoot the Commando Memorial, but it's been raining and now the light has broken. So we're about half an hour after sunrise and I've got the long telephoto out for the first time. So I'm gonna work out how to use this. I'm gonna do a nice shot of the Nevis range in the background, which looks absolutely fantastic under this lovely dramatic cloud. So um, without spending too long talking to you, let's go and shoot this and I'll show you what I'm doing. Shooting at, actually, don't need the big long lens for this because I'm just about 200 mil, but there's a mountain which is quite pointy, it looks like the buckle is not, I'm sure it's, it definitely isn't, because it's not even the same mountain range. Um, and some of the snow on the caps look really, really lovely. So let me show you through here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. So it's a bit like that. I put the mountain in the bottom right third. So the picture is actually about the clouds and the, and the color in, in the clouds, which looks really nice. Um, I'd like to shoot this as a portrait and do it as a pan, but unfortunately with this big long lens, I can't do that because the mount prohibits me. Um, I, I don't really want to use the L bracket because the lens is so heavy. So what I think I might do now is switch back over to the 24-200 because I'm only shooting at 200 mil um, and we'll shoot a little pan of this, I think. But this picture looks nice. I'll put it on the screen now so you can have a look at it. I've switched now to the 24-200 and we're at kind of just under 200 mil and I'm gonna do a, a panoramic of this. So I've got the tripod level using the spirit level on here, using the spirit level on the ball head and using the spirit level on the back of the camera. And then we're just gonna do a series of shots overlapped by about 25% and they're gonna stitch them together in Lightroom. Really loving the clouds, I'm loving the atmosphere over the mountains, it looks fantastic. I might still get the big long lens up and do some more close-ups, but for now, let's get this let's get this panoramic done. It's a bit colder today, which is nice actually. Hopefully we're in for a really good day's photography. That's what we have. the interest is back there the light's wonderful so I'm going to put the long lens on again and this time I'm going to zoom into the two mountains There's, the atmosphere in this picture looks fantastic and photography like this is all about atmosphere so <coughs> we've got an interesting day planned Gary's got a little tour from where we're staying some waterfalls some bridges um, we, we thought we'd come away from Glencoe today because it's Sunday and uh, lots of the tourists are going to be out and the places are going to be packed. So we're going to do that tomorrow and Tuesday, which will be the next couple of vlogs. So I hope you enjoy that. Right, let's get the long lens on. I'll show you this one. I'm literally just by 
down the road. But this is why I bought a long telephoto, because this looks amazing. Let me just take you into the camera. So that is what allows you to get, and look how close you can zoom in to just pick out the mountains and the snow clouds, looking great. That black line along the front here is a diagonal, which I'm enjoying using. That's gonna work really well. And then if I move you, let's undo this slightly. I'll move you around a bit. Well, if we go along here, we've got that mountain there. And a minute ago, that light you've just seen was over it. And it's so subtle, it's so subtle, but actually look, do you see the color just appearing on this corner here? Let's tighten you up a bit. See the colour just appearing, just kind of in that area there now. It just looks wonderful. <laughs> really lovely. Right, let's go and shoot that. <laughs> Location wise, it doesn't get any easier. Look, the car's literally just there. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm just playing with the two compositions, so these are the, the two mountain ranges that you've seen. I'm just watching the light, watching the clouds, and watching the light appear. Um, it's a lovely blue light, some orange light, some red light, it looks great. The only thing I have to remember with this, which I've learned to my cost, if you remember the video back at Dedham, uh, back at Flatford when it was flooded, I had a little bit of blur, camera shake. So I've got a three second delay on the camera and I'm also making sure that everything is really tight. And also I'm shooting at a 30th of a second, which means that um, I shouldn't get any camera shake on this. I'm then checking it on the screen. Everything so far seems to be good. But obviously this lens is so long, that the slightest vibration is gonna give you camera shake. So just be really, really aware of that. But you should get a super telephoto for shots like this. And I think I'm gonna leave this in the back of the car like this and just literally shoot from out of the window. What a wonderful start to the day though. Oh, the light's kicking off again. Right, I'm going to cut that now. I'm going to put all these pictures on the screen for you to have a look at. Tell me what you think. just around the bend basically and look the light now is looking fantastic on these trees here there's some lovely pines and this the side lighting and the reflection is quite amazing and we've got the lovely mountains in the background with a fantastic sky so I'm just going to compose this where the bay I'm aiming more towards the right so it's all about these fir trees and then we've got the mountain in the left to add a bit of interest to the background and just this other little island which is just sticking out in the sunshine. Um, eighth of a second is the exposure. I'd kind of like it a little bit more than that because I'd quite like those ripples to go completely. So what I'm gonna do is just run back to the car, grab a polarizer, and grab the ND filters, and then we'll try and slow this right down. I'll bring you closer so you can see me what I'm doing. So, I can see the framing on this. I've got a polarizer on now, a four stop ND. I'm now getting two seconds. I've gone down to F16 just to try and get rid of any ripples, and there are a few as it comes into the channel. There's a big lock. This is lock locky, by the way. I don't even mentioned that. But the light on those pine trees is amazing. Gary's actually to my right. There's a little island which is also floating out, which Gary really likes. He looks like he's photographing that. But for me, um, it's about the light on the side of the pines 
and the mountains in the background and we've got a really lovely sky let me just show you i mean the light's just <laughs> incredible but <laughs> i think i've nailed the shot let me just show you in the camera so that's what the shot's going to look like this tree here is important just to hold in the composition that's the little island that gary's looking at and it's lit up as well um, but for me it's all about the light on here look at it isn't it beautiful and the dark clouds behind and that imposing mountain with the snow caps looks beautiful i mean this bottom bit of the frame here is completely dark and where are we that's completely dark i'm gonna leave it in i haven't got a lot of choice now i could crop that out or i could i think i'm probably going to i'm just going to lighten it a touch but it's going to form a frame to the bottom um, what you need to what you can see on here and you you can't see on the picture because the, the crop rate is slightly or the rate aspect ratio is slightly different is i am getting some um some space at the top here um, i'm deliberately making sure that those trees there are not cutting off so there's a little bit of space on the image as you'll see uh, and if in doubt i'll just come back a little bit just to give it a little bit more so it looks actually let's make it it looks more like that okay I mean, that's quite a bit of tree there look but that's fine um actually even like that isn't a problem for me i don't think that's even the cutting the top of the trees off isn't a problem so i tend to look at that kind of stuff when i'm in lightroom and have a little play around with the with the crop if i need to um but it is pretty much decided on location. I've got an idea in my head. So, um, because that's what you should do really. Right, okay. Yeah, the aspect, in fact, looking here with the ca this camera set to the picture, it's a lot longer and thinner, the aspect ratio. So it does look a lot better, I'm very happy with that. And now the light's just going. But when it lit up a minute ago, it looked fantastic. So, and <laughs> we've hardly left the house. This is so, so great. Um, Loch Lochy is brilliant, I love it. Uh, I love being out of Scotland, it's just the most wonderful thing. Um, I felt yesterday uh, that the images should have been brilliant, but I didn't feel like they were, but I don't know what you thought about last week's and ran it more. Both Gary and I were saying, we felt a bit flat yesterday. And I think the only thing I could put it down to is the fact that I was driving for like ridiculous amount of time. So um, I think that's what happens when you're tired, but today, I feel really refreshed and the light is amazing and I'm really looking forward to seeing how many things we've photographed. We've got a list of about six things we've photographed today um, and these, these two shots weren't even on it so we haven't got to number one yet. <laughs> Good, excellent. Okay, let's move on. And so we moved on. Unfortunately, the light got very, very harsh. So we ended up driving around and we met these wonderful Highland cattle. It would have been rude not to take a few portraits. So we found ourselves 
at the double waterfall at ESG Egg and what follows, I'm afraid, I can't show you. Needless to say, this was extremely slippery and unfortunately, I fell on top of Billy. Oh. Oh. It's a sad day. Billy has died. Oh, I mean, she's not been well for a while. He's not been well for a while, but look. Just managed to fall over on the way down. Just slips, put my hands down. Had to be tripods in my hand. And Billy is no more. That's completely snapped off there and irreparable. So I've now got a bipod, not a tripod. So, you're on Albert. Um, I just want to show you this. Put uh, Billy down. Actually, I'll straighten you up a little bit. There we go. So, I don't fall over and break my neck. We're at the double falls here. I'll put the name of them on the screen. Um, Gary's photographing these from the bridge and you get a good view from the bridge, but I was attracted by these logs and these bits of rock in here and I actually got quite a good view of both the falls. I'm going to probably go a little bit further back because it's not that deep, it's just very slippery and shoot a kind of wide angle, long exposure picture of these falls. Um, yeah, and just think about all the joy that Billy has given me over the last few years. Right, let's do the picture and I'll show you what this looks like. It's gonna be a 14 to 30 mil lens. We're gonna use uh, an ND filter, a polarizer, and we're gonna blur the water. Here comes the picture and then we'll move on. Right, we're in the last location for this week's shoot. Uh, I'm in Invermoriston. Um, and Gary showed me this wonderful waterfall and lovely bridge. And they're kind enough to build a summer house ready for me so I don't get wet. How wonderful is that? Um, I've had to borrow a spare tripod. So thank you very much for Gary Suglin for lending me his tripod. Um, Still feeling quite sad about Billy. I think we'll do some kind of memorial at the end for this, but I'm going to shoot this anyway. I've got the 24 to 200 on. I'm going to use the polarizer. Going to use an ND filter. I'm going to blur the water. I'm going to try and get both these lovely old Scottish bridges in. It's going to look wonderful. Um, here comes the picture. Stay tuned for. Oh, and pay your respects to Billy. Okay. Um, if I could bring myself to do that. So, after the pictures, we'll say goodbye to Billy. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Goodbye.